Hi students, Professor Nijin here. Let's discuss uh, some final nuances around the random effects model. The transformation equation that we developed relates to OLS and fixed effects through the weight data. If we look at this one term around uh, the variable x1, we have beta1 times in parentheses x1 it minus theta times the average over time x1 i where theta is equal to zero the model collapses to pooled OLS and where theta is equal to one the model transforms to fixed effects All right, so the value of theta determines to which estimator, whether pooled OLS or fixed effects, random effects will be closer. It is usually informative to run all three, pooled OLS, fixed effects, and random effects, and compare the three sets of estimates to help determine the nature of the biases caused by leaving AI entirely in the composite error term VI. We can study that a little bit more if we rewrite the error term VIT minus theta VI bar as equal to 1 minus theta times AI plus uit minus theta ui bar. We can see that the potential bias caused by correlation with the error term, where the correlation is with the unobserved heterogeneity ai, is attenuated by the multiplication factor, the weight, 1 minus theta. So if we're if we have explanatory variables correlated with AI, then adding this weight will attenuate or reduce the bias caused by the correlation with AI because that unobserved heterogeneity will be lessened in that error by that weight. So recall that with fixed effects, um, or rather random effects approaches fixed effects as theta approaches one. As theta approaches one, AI approaches zero. Okay, so we are attenuating AI in the error term as theta grows. Now there is one more way to think about random effects versus fixed effects. And that is the Hausman test. The Hausman test can tell us whether the fixed effects AI are actually endogenous. In the same way, the Hausman test is used to tell us whether a variable is actually endogenous with IV methods, and we will discuss that in the next chapter. Under the null hypothesis, both estimators, the fixed effects and random effects, are consistent. However, the random effects estimator is more efficient. So, under the null hypothesis, the expected value of BIT given the xit is equal to zero. Under the alternative, only the fixed effects estimator is efficient, is, excuse me, uh, consistent. So under the alternative, the expected value is a vit given the xit is not equal to zero. Now we can, these are the Theoretical hypotheses, we can rewrite these in terms of 
in empirics, the way that we would test these is by comparing the coefficients under the null the estimate of the coefficient in random effects minus the estimate of the coefficient in fixed effects are the same which would be true if they are both unbiased however random effects would be more efficient and so have lower standard errors under the alternative beta hat re minus beta hat fe for the fixed effects are not the same because only fixed effects is consistent. So we use the, the Hausman test and we will complete the Hausman test in Stata in the Stata tutorial um, to test these, these hypotheses. Now, some final nuances. Sometimes folks use random effects as a consequence of the variable being interest, of the variable of interest being constant over time, which is not necessarily a great way to choose random effects. A better way to choose uh, whether to use random effects is using this Hausman test. And it is most common in empirical work to present the results of the Hausman test for all panel data regressions. If doing policy analysis with aggregated data, so at the city level, at the county level, you have data at the state level, at the country level, fixed effects will always be more convincing. That's it for our discussion on advanced panel data methods. Stay tuned to our next series in which we will discuss instrumental variables.